going in a little deeper on some of the ecosystems out there that are costing to do transactions, how this might actually play out in the future. This is going to cover ETH, Solana, Avalanche, all that. You don't want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. Let's get into this today because it's going to kind of give a narrative around what are some of the opportunities. Could open up some opportunities within some tokens, open up some opportunities within some chains, and what you guys need to watch for. So make sure and stay tuned for that. I do want to thank our sponsor, and that is CoinLedger. If you're wanting to get your taxes done, this is the best way to do it. And it it's a great solution because it ties into all your exchanges, all your DeFi, all your wallets, and all making that a very simple way to get your taxes done in minutes. All you have to do is use our link down below. It's going to give you an additional discount and you get a chance to go in and get your taxes done. You can do all the work. There's no fee up front until you're ready to actually print out your reports and do that. So technically it's free to kind of learn what your tax position is and then you can kind of jump in from there. So check out coinledger.io. All right, so let's get into a couple of points here. One, of course, is the headline right here, Ethereum gas fees reach highest level in eight months. And I think everybody that's you know out there watching our show probably have been experiencing this on everything from transaction moves, selling tokens, buying tokens, all those kind of things within you know the swaps, the DEXs, et cetera. All that has been happening and there's some real fees out there. This is a good example of you know just the craziness that fees are being conducted as. And you know when you're moving large amounts, depending on the kind of transaction, you could really get stung with some of these fee uh, situations that are playing out within Ethereum. And, and I think this has been, you know, listen, it's been a problem that we've known about for quite some time. Yes, it's going to, I think now what we've got is some opportunities to getting this change and really kind of open things up for it. But if you look at what's been causing a lot of this transaction, is it something like a Farcaster, which of course is kind of the next generation social? I would say not because, you know, the, the overall uh, daily active users, yes, it's growing. Yeah, sure. No problem. But it's just not at critical mass. We're not seeing big movements. So could it be uh, other things that are causing these fees to rise? Of course, right now, here's where fees are continuing to kind of go up, even though it's had a little bit of a, an adjustment down here as we see the market cool just a minute. So this is the factor I think that a lot of people are going to need to consider, especially in projects that you might invest in. One of the things that we're watching very closely is what are some opportunities? Remember, we talked about this ERC-404 um, protocol that was proposed here, I think it was last week. We kind of broke this down for you guys. Essentially, this is a new technology that if passed, it's related to Pandora, uh, ERC-404, if it's passed, it's going to have some real reduction percentages that will impact on this. So you can kind of see it's from anywhere between 27 to as much as 50% less in gas fees. So that in itself, big news for the Ethereum ecosystem. That's a very positive uh, solution. Avalanche, of course, has already started moving in this direction with their warp messaging uh, now coming to EVM. A couple of points to highlight here. Testnet goes live the 13th, this today. And then uh, this integrates with Avalanche warp messaging into EVM. The other thing that uh, ACP uh, brings is the native cross chain communication to every EVM chain out there on the Avalanche ecosystem and also establishes a standard for future uh, virtual machines to communicate using AWMs. All right, so just to explain this further, you know, this is a good diagram of it. You know, this is how subnets work on Avalanche out there, simply meaning these transactions, two subnets can talk to each other, do transactions without actually having to incur gas fees. That's one of the things that, and going on chain to incur those fees. So that's one of the things that Avalanche does bring to the plate that is a bit more different. Now, Polygon also released big news this week. This is all talking about a new, what they call type one prover, that if you look at the diagram here, let me kind of highlight that. That's essentially what they're doing right here into this, what they call the ag layer, which essentially is another kind of staging zone for these transactions to take, take place before they go into the bridge and actually start to generate gas fees which is the big problem that we see. Now, all this has to be ready to go fairly soon because guess what? You got Magic Eden launching the Ethereum marketplace. And when this launches, the likelihood of demand is going to be pretty significant, especially when you think about many of the NFTs that are going to begin immediate um, transactions on the ETH ecosystem. All of this needs to be in place. So they got 13 days basically to get this moving. I was watching a little bit of what was happening with Matic. Don't sleep on that one. This could be a comeback time for uh, Matic. 
Okay, so then you have Payment Processor, which is Limit Break. This is the company behind the transactions in Magic Eden. All right, so here's a good example of the payment processor versus others. Blur is a good example. So what, what you guys are seeing, maybe you're listening to the podcast side, is payment processor is about like one, maybe 25% that of Blur in terms of overall fee structure here. So it's going to be a lot less in terms of fees to be able to go in this direction. And I think positive input for what uh, Magic Eden is going to see. If you look at their charts, let me go down into that. And you can see it right here. Payment processor, gas fees, as you can see, starts to drop significantly. And both on royalties, no fees, marketplace fees, et cetera, on all of this in comparison to what was happening in the traditional market. So simply put, this is a technology that is going to lower fees in these marketplaces that are going to compete with any, many of these. So this is a, a very good news for how we could see a lot of these collectibles uh, getting to be a lot more uh, accessible. This right here is Coinbase getting into the game. In terms of microtransactions, it shows right here 9 trillion worth of stablecoin transactions just in 2022. So this is being used in a very big way. I want to cut to a clip that kind of explains what they're trying to do around these transaction fees. Listen in. Even though it's still technically money, it's tortured, humiliated, forgotten. The currency of choice for paying people back with spite. Make me digital. Let me soar. I imagine me actually paying for stuff amongst the people again, instantly traveling the globe without fees or friction. Is that too much to ask for an old top-hatted dreamer? All right, so you can see Coinbase, that's an ad that they're doing to try to, you know, look at these microtransactions as a big opportunity because they are in general, especially when you look at what we'll see in terms of in-game transactions, things around NFTs, all of that that I think plays into the future use of stablecoins. Wyoming, of course, launching their stablecoin uh, bill, which is going to be happening actually this week. I think they've got a date here. Let's see if I can find it for you. Yeah, this is going to get uh, pretty much just not necessarily decided, but they're going to start to unveil the architecture in which they're going to do this. This all happens on February 15th at 9 a.m. Wyoming time. So that'll be one to watch right there to see what happens. Is Wyoming going to be choosing what kind of protocols they're going to be using? What kind of partners and vendors are going to be tied into this? This is a big, uh, I think a big deal because it's going to get into more and more states getting into the use of crypto overall. Here's a nice piece from uh, NFT now talking about uh, Ledger and Coinbase now partnering to enable users to receive crypto purchases and transfers directly in the wallet. So it's directly going to tie into Coinbase where you can make your in-app purchases within the Ledger Live app right there. So are you ready to, you know, self-custody some ETH or some Bitcoin, whatever it might be? All of that is now going to be able to tie directly into your Coinbase uh, account. That's a pretty big deal. Let me show you a clip on this. It kind of gives you some insights. All right, so for, for some of you guys watching or listening in on that, on the audio version, I'm trying to get our guys away from using just these audio clips only. Point being is it showed the Ledger, the Ledger app in action with Coinbase Pay to be able to enable you to do your transactions there. So if you are a Ledger user, this is available to you now. So I don't know. If you, if you guys use Ledger, I'd love to, if you've used it, do you like it? Let me know kind of what your thoughts on the whole thing is. So this is a project we showcased about a year ago, maybe even longer, that was essentially a self-custody debit card tied in with Visa that would enable you to utilize a tool just like this in terms of doing your entire banking. So you get self-custody, spending, digital assets, all that available within the app and the card itself. This is something I think has been, I think will be well received once people start to understand the services out there. And I think it's one of those products that could be uh, very successful. Let's go to a clip on this. I'll give you some insights. Do it, honey. 
if you're so clever. Then Guardian Leviosa. All right, so again, another ad. These people don't pay us, by the way. <laughs> and so, and none of these are sponsors. Just we're giving you guys some insights on it. That was an ad by Genosis promoting this uh, out there. I was surprised they got Harry Potter involved, though. That's uh, that's pricey. Now, why is this important? Payments going to be a big deal going forward. Here's Tolly, right there, leader of Free World and Solana. We did 20 million in Solana mobile sales with Shopify and Solana USDC. Paid zero fees. This is a big deal because merchant fees, as we've shown on this show many times, these are huge fees to retailers, shop owners, restaurant, bars, all those people who are paying significant in the trillions annually uh, of what these kind of fees are, are assessing. Credit card sales cost about 600K in fees, about the same volume. That's three full-time engineers. That's what they're saying. So now you know they pay 200K for a full-time engineer, full-stack engineer. So that's a big deal. Now, a couple of points they hit on right here. Tully says, hey, what's awesome is we have both credit card and USDC as options. This was interesting to me because 51, over half, of users self-selected USDC. This tells me that we are getting to a point where a lot of people utilizing this tech are ready for a digital dollar, basically a stable coin. And I think that's what we're going to see very soon. All right, so another issue that may cause gas fees to continue to rise is the whole issue around betting and what we've seen in that transa those transactions. This is going to continue to happen because remember, even though the Super Bowl just happened, you still have March Madness coming up. So this plays into it. I want to show you some data on the Super Bowl betting. Listen in. Right before kickoff, some 15,000 bets per second were being made. According to GeoComply, that's a geolocation technology company. It's a record. And the company says Super Bowl weekend volumes increased 22% over last year as more Americans wagered than ever before. One of the biggest challenges we're also seeing is that, like I said, only 50% of Americans actually have access to legal, licensed online sports books. This is the action in Kansas City, Missouri. You can see the green versus Kansas City, Kansas, where online gambling is not available nor legal. Point being is that blockchain is going to be a potential opportunity. Here's a good example of Rollbit, their spike, of course, in activity in online betting. This is going to continue to grow, I think. This is going to open up a lot of opportunities in this sector right here in the SportsFi arena for uh, transactions. And again, this all goes back to Ethereum gas fees being high and how we can solve that uh, going forward. All right, so in the clip, you heard uh, the reporter there talk about 15,000 uh, transactions per second um, being able to be done for sports betting. This is a good example of it. The only place that could possibly do that is going to be Solana. Here's an example of Seoul Casino, a project within Solana. Right there, as you can see, continued transactions moving up and most likely capable of handling those kinds of activities. Further into this, let's get into another project out there, Heroes of Mavia. Uh, this, of course, is another one. This was a a great game if you were, were doing a little bit of a you know a day trade or a you know a swing trade. This was one that played in. And remember, Mavi hasn't selected a chain just yet, so that's a big one. Could they go on Solana? I don't know. Maybe that one. I think will be a one to watch for sure. Many of you probably have already traded this one, uh, but if you haven't, it's it's on our watch list now. So we're going to keep an eye on it. And this is in reference to you know kind of just looking at what games are coming into Solana, what that opportunity might be. You can also earn crypto now by playing Solana game Aurori on Epic Games. So this is all happening. We know that this is going on. We've already seen the launch on Epic by several games and the likelihood of in-game transactions, I think is just around the corner. And of course, you're going to need that kind of transaction speed. Let's go to a clip real quick, because this will get you into a little bit more of what's happening with Aurori on Epic Games. Listen in. That was just simply an ad, <laughs> not an ad that they paid for, but Epic's game, Epic Games, of course, uh, talking about Aurora. So all this is good news for blockchain. It's good news for Web3, and I think, you know, uh, the future. Others to watch out for, and we've shown these many times on the show, is uh, Beam hitting 2 million transactions. And, of course, you've got DFK coming in, Shrapnel, Godzilla, 
Remember the deal with Xbox launching uh, what's happening with Off the Grid. All of this, very positive news. Good news. Avalanche still kind of killing it right here. If you look at, look at these transactions right there. This is crazy. Total transaction. This is still a subnet and a test net. I think this is one of those things that we will see massive explosion, both Solana and Avalanche gaming ecosystems, just because of these transaction scenarios that play into it. All right, last up here, just a quick one. Uh, this was, of course, showing um, a good example of off the grid, a true Web3 game going into Xbox. So that's a good one to kind of clean up. All right, just to look at a couple of charts right now, Avalanche, if you guys are checking out AVAX, holding it at around 39.78, really holding on well after the uh, macro data coming in for inflation. Solana also holding now and continuing to climb, now hitting 112 as we record this. So very interesting. Bitcoin, very solid right now, coming back into the 49K range. So this will be intriguing to watch is an R, digital assets starting to kind of look and separate from the traditional markets. This will be one to keep a close eye on. All right, make sure and get into the Diamond Circle. Great place to get additional content. Catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.